All right, we are on the uh, point one second per division setting. It's a very slow setting, and uh, it's kind of hard to see because the phosphor doesn't retain the trace long enough. I mean, I can turn up the the intensity, and you can kind of make out the uh, the dashes. And what I can see here is that yes, it is completing a complete cycle within a division. What we're going to do though is we'll go ahead and turn our um, our uh, sweep up to um, 10 milliseconds per division instead of a hundred. So that's just 10 times uh, faster and we now see that we complete one cycle in 10 divisions. And that's exactly what should be happening at 0.1 seconds. Because it's 10 milliseconds per division times 10 would be 100 milliseconds. This is a 100 millisecond signal. So we're going to go to the 10 millisecond and we should see now that we have a, uh, a cycle completed at every division. If you look you'll see that we start on the edge of the division we split in the middle and then we end on the end of the division line. And that's in every case. Begins on the top, ends on the bottom. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, turn up our speed. We're going to go to one millisecond. And turn up our range. This is one millisecond per division. And what we see is again, we begin, split in the middle, and end in one division in every case. Let's go ahead and turn our range up, factor of 10. This is, uh, by the way, this is 0.5 milliseconds. You should get five complete peaks, one, two, three, four, five complete peaks. If I was to move it over, you could see what I mean by five cycles. All right. If I go to point two, you'll get two cycles. If I go to point one, you'll get one cycle in ten. So that's working great. Let's go ahead and uh, kick ourselves to the point one millisecond input and what we see once again is that we have a complete cycle in one division. Start, break in the middle, end in one division. Okay. We can turn ourselves up range wise. Here's uh, 50 microseconds per division and we wind up with the familiar five cycle. 20 microsecond per division, we get the familiar two cycles, and then 10 microseconds per division, and we see that we begin and end in 10 divisions. All right, we're going to turn our range switch up again. We are at 10 microseconds per division. You will see us um, start and end in one division. I can turn up my sweep rate. Here's five microseconds per division. We've got five cycles. Two microseconds per division. We have two cycles. One microsecond per division, and it takes ten divisions to get the ten microsecond sweep in there. We're going to go to one microsecond sweep, and we see that we start and end in an every division. And I can go ahead and go to 0.5 microseconds, and we see five cycles. 0.2 microseconds, and we see two cycles. 0.1 microseconds per division, and we see one complete cycle. It's actually difficult to see the beginning. If I can darken it up, I guess. There we go.
10, 10 divisions, one cycle. And we've covered the entire sweep range. And it checked out 100%. <coughs> this is good for both channels. It's the same sweep. One sweep, we have two channels vertical, one, one channel for the horizontal. So what we're going to do is hook up to our signal generator now and we'll display some uh, triangle waves, check out some frequencies and just see that it's linear. Okay, uh, we've got ourselves hooked up to a uh, frequency generator here. And we are at the moment generating uh, approximately 10 hertz and displaying it on the screen. Uh, it's, uh, we are displaying 4 volts um, across the screen, so it's 2 volts peak, or 4 volts peak to peak. We are on the um, 0.5 volt per, per um, division setting on a times 10 probe, so 8 divisions times 0.5 would be 4 volts. Okay, we're going to kick ourselves up here, and we also see that, by the way, we are on the uh, 10 millisecond per division setting, and um, there are 10 divisions, so that's 100 milliseconds, and uh, which is 0.1 seconds, and 10 hertz would be would have a period of 0.1 seconds. So we are seeing a 10 hertz display across the screen. Just checks. Okay, let's kick ourselves up a decade. And uh, we'll go ahead, we see that we are in one division now with each uh, triangle, but we're going to go ahead and take ourselves to one millisecond per division and uh, line ourselves on the trace and we see that we have held our, our full cycle. 10 divisions and uh, we are running right now at a hundred Hertz this is one millisecond per division times 10 divisions is 10 milliseconds which uh, we're having a period of uh, 10 milliseconds um, that's a hundred Hertz let's go ahead and kick ourselves up to a thousand Hertz and we see that we have now a, a full cycle per division we can go ahead and raise our our range setting and align our our beam so that we start the trace at the gradical on the left and we see one full cycle in 10 divisions and uh, means we must be running a thousand hertz and in, you got a note just keep in mind that if you see a triangle wave, if it's a straight line, which is what we are intending it to be, we are feeding in a triangle wave. We know that we are reading the, the y-axis scale accurately, and we know that we are reading the x-axis scale accurately. We tested those in the beginning. So our time basin voltages are accurate, and we are displaying a triangle wave. You can see it. Therefore, we are... are recreating faithfully what we put in. It's linear. All right, let's go ahead and go up a factor of 10 again. And uh, we are now running 10,000 hertz. There are, uh, we're going to go to 10 microseconds per division. We see we have 10 divisions times 10 microseconds is 100 microseconds, and that should be the period of 10,000 hertz. There's 100,000 hertz. And 10 divisions, we get a full cycle. We are at one microsecond, so that's 10 microseconds, which would be 100,000 hertz period. We go to one meg. So we're at a megahertz now. We are going to get, uh, and we're at one microsecond per division, so we should see one full cycle per division, and we are. 
You'll notice the peaks fall on peaks fall on every division line up on the top here as the way I have it adjusted. We could do the bottom just as well. The peak hits on every line on the bottom. Okay. And finally, this is 10 megahertz. Kick up our intensity a little bit. Center ourselves on the screen, and we are right now cycle in every division looks like there we've got a little bit of gain here let's turn this there we go that's easier to see we've got a cycle in every division we are at the 0.1 microsecond per division setting so uh, that's a cycle in uh, a tenth of a microsecond, so that's 10 million hertz we're running. And then we have a times 10 knob here, which if we rotate it, it's supposed to expand this times a factor of 10. And uh, what we notice is that our triangle wave is not linear at this high frequency, and it's not the scope's fault. It's my generator. But... Uh, adjusted myself back to a mega cycle and I have uh, I'm on the one microsecond trace so we have one full cycle per division and I wanted to demonstrate that the uh, this knob here which allows me to expand the uh, x-axis by a factor of 10 if I go to the extreme I'm going to turn this thing and you'll see that that expands the uh, waveform and in fact now I have one full cycle in 10 divisions so I've gone by a factor of 10 I was I went from one cycle of division to one cycle in 10 so there is a factor of 10 magnification here so that's working too uh, we can be uh, triggered in automatic this is my trigger level adjustment here this is what selects whether I'm an automatic or normal. If I uh, rotate past the trigger point, I lose my, uh, my trigger and my trace uh, starts running by the screen. And same thing on the other end. Okay, so I center myself. If I go to the normal mode, then in normal, if you get off of the, uh, the trigger point, you see nothing. Then you see trigger and you see nothing. It just helps you know when you're triggered, I suppose. Uh, normally I run in auto. And I am on internal source. I can have external. I can use the line as a source of frequency. Uh, or I can go XY. This does have XY capability. Um, I will demonstrate that. <coughs> Give me a few moments. All right, at this point we have the scope connected in XY mode. We're still feeding in a triangle wave so that you actually see a rectangle being displayed on the screen. I am, uh, I am running the X and the Y from the same signal source. I have a, a T connector here, so I'm able to feed from the same signal source. We should, and if I was feeding a sine wave in, we'd see the typical Lissajou uh, ellipse or oval and uh, we can do that easily enough. I'll just switch to a sine wave. There we go. 
and that indicates that uh, the input on both channels is at the same frequency and, uh, and phase angle. Okay, um, so that's a test of it. We can we adjust our uh, vertical position using the channel A vertical position point, and we adjust our horizontal using the uh, horizontal adjustment on the right. So there's our test of the XY. It's working fine. We'll, we'll next do the, uh, the probe adjustment point and we'll show you that it's functioning. Okay, we are connected back up with our probe. Our probe is in the uh, times 10 position. And I'm going to touch the probe adjustment point. And uh, when I do, I'm going to see these square waves pop up. Okay, now I'm going to make an adjustment to my range setting here so we can see this a little bit easier. There we go. And we'll take this end off. I will insert the probe. There we go. Now I've got a hand free to do the, what I need to do, uh, which is to um, use a screwdriver and adjust my probe properly. What you're going to see me doing is there's a slot on the, uh, the probe handle here with a screw in it. And I'm going to turn that screw and you'll see that my square wave gets distorted. Okay, that's uh, overcompensated, that's undercompensated, there's overcompensated, and then we're going to go for the squared off setting, which is what we want. Make it just about as square as you can. And then you've adjusted properly. So the probe adjustment is working. Um, there really isn't anything else to show you. Uh, I've got a beam finder on here. If I if I'm lost and I don't know, you know, if my trace is off the screen somewhere, left, right, up, or down, if I hit beam finder, it always comes back to the center. And I should be able to see it. I can turn the intensity up a little. It's easier to. Oops, not mean to turn it off. There's your beam finder. And uh, channel one, channel two, dual trace setting in the middle. And that's it. Good luck on your bidding. Uh, it's a wonderful unit. Oh, and before I. Uh, before I forget, along with this unit is an excellent calibration manual. Let's turn on our overhead light again. Okay, this is a Tektronix service manual. Uh, it contains maintenance activities, theory of operations, specifications, and then we have um, we have our circuit diagrams on 11 by 17 paper, so it's uh, easier to see the diagrams. I like that because my eyes are not what they used to be. Excellent book for reference. You'll be able to keep the scope up, calibrate it yourself. If anything ever happened to it, you'd be able to try and diagnose it because you got something to work with. And then along with that, we will provide a brand new set of 40 megahertz probes. That will go with the Tektronix scope. So, the scope, a wonderfully working scope, an excellent manual. A beautiful set of probes, and you'll be in business. Good luck on your bidding.